On October 27, 1964, a stranger dressed as a detective broke into a young woman's home. He tied the victim to her bed, sexually assaulted her, and then abruptly left, saying I'm sorry. Police identified the assailant as Albert DeSalvo based on the woman's description. When his photograph was made public, many women recognized him as the man who had assaulted them. DeSalvo was not suspected of involvement in any murders. Only after he was charged with rape did he give a detailed confession of his activities as the Boston Strangler. Before we continue, don't forget to take a second and subscribe to the Past Crimes channel. Albert Henry DeSalvo was born on September 3, 1931, in Chelsea, Massachusetts, to Frank and Charlotte DeSalvo. DeSalvo was a rapist and suspected serial killer in Boston, Massachusetts, who claimed to be the Boston Strangler, the murderer of 13 women in the Boston area between 1962 and 1964. His father was a violent alcoholic who once knocked out all of his wife's teeth and bent her fingers back in front of their children. He would also bring prostitutes home and have sexual encounters with them in front of his wife and young children. As a child, DeSalvo tortured animals and began shoplifting and stealing in his early adolescence, frequently running afoul of the law. DeSalvo, then 12, was arrested for battery and robbery in November 1943. He was sent to the Lyman School for Boys in December of the same year. He was paroled in October 1944 and began working as a delivery boy. He was returned to the Lyman School in August 1946 for stealing an automobile. DeSalvo joined the United States Army after completing his second sentence. After his first tour of duty, he was honorably discharged. He re-enlisted, and despite being tried in a court-martial, DeSalvo was honorably discharged once more. DeSalvo was a military police sergeant with the 14th Armored Cavalry Regiment's 2nd Squadron. When DeSalvo was arrested on February 25, 1967, you can see him wearing a U.S. Navy dress blue uniform with a Petty Officer 3rd Class, E-4, insignia on his sleeve. Thirteen single women between the ages of 19 and 85 were murdered in the Boston area between June 14, 1962, and January 4, 1964. They were eventually linked to the Boston Strangler. The majority of the women were sexually assaulted in their apartments and strangled with clothing. The oldest victim died as a result of a heart attack. Two more people were stabbed to death, one of whom was severely beaten. The women were assumed to have known their killer or voluntarily allowed him into their homes because there was no evidence of forced entry. In addition to the Strangler murders, police were investigating a series of rapes committed by a man known as the Measuring Man or the Green Man in the fall of 1964. On October 27, 1964, a stranger dressed as a detective broke into the home of a young woman in East Cambridge. He tied his victim to her bed, sexually assaulted her, and then abruptly left, saying I'm sorry. The description provided by the woman led police to identify the assailant as DeSalvo. When his photograph was made public, many women recognized him as the man who had assaulted them. DeSalvo pretended to be a motorist experiencing car trouble and attempted to break into a home in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. The home's owner, Future Brockton Police Chief Richard Spruels became suspicious and eventually shot at DeSalvo with a shotgun. DeSalvo was arrested for his role in the Green Man rapes but was not suspected of involvement in the murders. Only after he was charged with rape did he give a detailed confession of his activities as the Boston Strangler, both under hypnosis induced by William Joseph Bryan and during interviews with Assistant Attorney General John Bottomley without hypnosis. He initially confessed to fellow inmate George Nasser, who then informed F. Lee Bailey, his attorney. Despite some inconsistencies, DeSalvo was able to provide information that had not previously been made public. There was, however, no physical evidence to back up his confession. 
As a result, he was tried for previously unrelated robbery and sexual offenses. The confession to the murders was mentioned by Bailey during the trial as part of his client's history as part of an insanity defense, but the judge ruled it inadmissible. Dr. Harry Kozel, a neurologist who had established the first sex offender treatment center in Massachusetts, evaluated DeSalvo's mental state for his 1967 trial. Bailey entered into a plea bargain to secure his client's guilt in exchange for removing the death penalty from consideration, as well as to preserve the possibility of an eventual insanity verdict. In 1967, DeSalvo was sentenced to life in prison. In February of that year, he escaped from Bridgewater State Hospital with two other inmates, sparking a massive manhunt. A note addressed to the superintendent was discovered on his bunk. DeSalvo stated in it that he escaped to draw attention to the conditions in the hospital and his own situation. He called his lawyer three days after the escape to turn himself in. His lawyer then directed that he be rearrested in Lynn, Massachusetts. Following his escape, he was transferred to Walpole, a maximum security prison, where he later recanted his strangler confessions. On November 25, 1973, Albert DeSalvo was found stabbed to death in the prison infirmary. <laughs>